welcome back to Nationwide. Now, when the popular TV and radio presenter Angus McNally retired in 2020, he quickly filled up his spare time with his passion for billiards and snooker. Our reporter Niall Martin went to visit him in his home in North County Dublin. Would you like to know how to how they really work? Yes. How's it? Angus McAnally was a figure of fun to a whole generation of Irish kids. Yeah. How? how could you, Mary? Oh. I always thought she liked me. Starting his on-screen career on Anything Goes in the 80s, Angus followed his actor father, Ray McAnally, into showbiz. After a 40-year career in RTE, Angus retired in 2020, but he's never been busier. Well, Angus McAnally, you're a great advertisement for retirement. I've heard many people say this before, but I can't imagine how I managed to do everything that I did in RTE when I was doing it, because I'm doing so much now that how did I fit in work as well? I'm having a great time. Obviously, COVID knocked everything for six. All my plans, the tour, my music shows had to stop. But I've always had a passion and a love for billiards and snooker, and that has kept me going. Having a table in the house was a godsend. It actually kept me sane and alive, I think, during COVID. But I mean, I remember at one stage, no more than anybody else, I didn't leave the house for six weeks. And my wife, Billy, was saying, please get out and go for a walk. And I think I was just so terrified I didn't. So I just stayed in the house for six weeks. But bit by bit then, I started doing a little schedule of playing on the table, and it got, it got me back into a good place. Luckily, Angus had just got Dermot Bannon to design a house extension for a snooker and billiards table. Quite possibly the only dark room Dermot has ever designed. When my two big sons uh, moved out of the house, I got Dermot Bannon in and I said, my big dream was to have a snooker table, billiard table in the house. Is it doable? And he had a look at the house and he said, yeah, you need obviously to put on an extension. And my idea was the extension would be where the billiard room would be. And he said, no, no, no. He said, put it in the middle of the house because don't you want it nice and dark? I said, yeah. But he said, we put in the blinds that will then put out the light in, in daytime or whatever. But I now have the most beautiful billiard room. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Snooker and billiards have always been a passion for Angus. He's now on the board of the World Billiards Association but he got the love of the green bays from his dad. This is one of my treasured possessions in the billiard room. What it is, is a very young Angus McAnally playing his dad, Ray McAnally, my father. We played a billiard match of 5,000, okay? So you could play the game for two hours, or two and a half hours, an hour and a half, whatever. We'd mark the balls at the end of it. My dad would go and make a movie for six weeks. He'd come back and say, are you ready? Yep. And we'd continue on. He gave me 1,500 of a handicap. And bit by bit, these were the scores each session, right? We eventually played the final on Stephen's Day in 1971. And how good was the handicap? My dad won 5,000 to my score of 4,996. Four points in it after all that time. When I came home at 13 years of age, I said, Dad, I don't know whether this is okay, but I've... I've started playing snooker, and he said, wait there. And I was petrified, because he had this big, booming voice with him. And he went off, and he came back with the cue that his father had given him. And he said, there you are, there's a the cue to play with. And I've given that cue to my son, and he's given it to his son. So it was lovely five generations of the cue passed on. Angus then brought us down to the opening of the brand new snooker academy just outside Carlow Town. Former world champion Ken Doherty has come along for the official ceremony. And let's lift the roof as we welcome the champion of 1997, Mr. Ken Doherty. We're delighted to have it. It's been it's been a, a long time coming. Um, probably 18 months of hard work uh, and dedication from all the committee here. But what we have is the it's a centre of excellence absolutely the best facility in Europe. Sport Island have been uh, instrumental in the whole uh, development of this. We, we've, we've, we've managed to get funding um, uh, to help us along the way and that's we, we, we certainly couldn't do it without them and they're our biggest partner without and they, they, they allow us to, to operate annually. So we have these wonderful facilities here, the top, top class tables for the very, very best uh, and all of us. So 
it's it's a great time hopefully for for snooker going forward and we we're, we're very uh, excited about the future frame one man mark three that's a look for love the waistcoat <laughs> This is a dream for me, pitting my skills against the 1997 world champion, sharing the same table, feeling the adrenaline rush. <laughs> Very good. facility like this you know in Carlo uh, it creates a sort of interest in the sport and you know for young aspiring young professionals to come here they don't need to do anything else just come here and play you know you've got the coaching you've got the tables there's no excuses basically um, so hopefully it will inspire you know lots of young men and young women as well to come into the sport as well because there's wonderful opportunities for young women in that sport as well so i would i would hope that they will a lot of them will take advantage of this we have four women on the, on the world tour which is uh, a wonderful opportunity for them we had our first mixed world mixed doubles only uh, a couple of weeks ago on itv which was a huge success it got wonderful numbers and it gave it sort of showcased the talent of the women in that sport uh, and they're on a level playing field with, with the men as well, which is fantastic. And uh, it's just a great opportunity to be able to showcase their talents and also inspire, as I said, young girls out there all over the world to try and take up the sport. And they will too have a chance of playing the top players in, a, in our game. So, yeah, I would encourage even young girls in Ireland to come and have a look. Just come inside the door. You know, it's a friendly place. There's, there's some great coaches. PJ is the national coach here. And he will help the girl at any level. Uh, so you don't have to be at a top level to come in and enjoy the facilities here. And Doherty. This was the moment in 1997 that Ken Doherty became champion of the world. <laughs> our biggest welcome was from his mother, Rose who had chased him out of his local snooker hall with a wooden spoon as a youngster and was too nervous to watch her son's famous victory. My mother suffered from uh, high blood pressure, hypertension, so she could never watch me play live. So any time I was playing live, and particularly during that time in the World Championship, she had to leave the house, she'd get on her bike and she'd cycle into town and she'd go into Clarion Street Church and light a few candles uh, while all this sort of furor was going on in the, in, the, in the house with the likes of you guys and the press and all in the house. and and uh, recreate, you know, create lovely live pictures. Uh, for me, I didn't know anything about that. I wanted to keep myself in a little cocoon uh, back in my hotel in Sheffield and just concentrate on what was happening at the Crucible. Uh, of course, I was playing Stephen Hendry, who was unbeaten in, in the previous five years, so I was a huge underdog. But um, I sort of, you know, I had when I was a kid and I saw Alex Higgins win in 82 and Dennis win in 85, I had a dream of winning the World Championship, you know, you know lifting that beautiful cup. Uh, just like they did and it sort of it sort of gave me an extra belief you know they, they talk about visualization and stuff like well i had that i had that dream and i could see myself lifting it and uh, when i lifted it uh, it was like all your birthdays and dreams coming together at once you know and the fact that the whole of ireland stood still and i stopped crying in dublin for three hours uh, was just the icing on the cake and coming home with the cup was well, one of the greatest days of my life still you know every time you pick it up you still get you still get the chill and the shivers down the spine you know and it's my mother used to clean it all the time we used to sit on the top of her tv in the front room and it'd be clean and every time i come downstairs i'd pick it up off the off the sitting room and i'd give it a big kiss and she'd say well at least you won it once <laughs> she loves 
Aaron Hill from Cork is our new Irish snooker star. Recently, he beat the world number two, Judd Trump, at the Northern Irish Open. Ken said he visualized himself holding up that World Cup, you know, years before he actually won it. Have you got that vision in your head? Absolutely. Every night, um, I have a big drawing on my fridge at home saying I'm going to be world champion someday. And the day that I wrote it, so every time I walk past the fridge or go out to get a snack or something, I always see it. So, yes, yeah, fresh in my head every day. And uh, hopefully someday I'll do it. How did you start? I was a soccer player initially, and I had trials for Cork City, and they didn't make it by only a couple of players, so I was devastated. And um, my dad just brought me out for a game of snooker to cheer me up. And since then he's broke from uh, me what he's left. The new facility in Carlo is open to young and old, male and female, including players with a disability, according to national coach PJ Nolan. It's a dream job. Uh, it's one of the best places that I've ever coached, and it's really good for any level. Like, we have players from aged 8 up to 80 that play snooker and billiards in Ireland, so it's a fantastic opportunity for any level, any age, and we've got tournaments every weekend, and it's an amazing sport if you get involved with it. We've got the next crop of players coming through now that are 11 and 12 years old, and Snipple Builders Ireland really want to support them and, and, and drive them to more success. For more information on the Snooper Academy in Carlo, you can go straight to the website on screen now. That ends our programme this evening. From everyone on Motorwise, Claw Magan. On Wednesday's Nationwide, we have stories.